Hello everyone, this is Pat from PSA Custom Creations. I thought I'd take a minute to create a video to show how I connected my Hitachi VFD to my Bridgeport mill. If you're like me, you've looked online, tried to figure out what's the best model of VFD to connect to it, but there aren't a whole lot of really clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. I bought the caveat this by saying I'm not an electrician, not a machinist, or a professional welder by trade, just a hobbyist who likes to make things. You're probably, you may be like me and you're looking for some advice on that. What I've done is I've looked on practical machinists, home shop machinists, a bunch of internet forums and other guides in order to try to connect this to it. Based on advice from one of the users on practical machinists, I went and settled on the Hitachi WJ200 015F VFD for my Bridgeport 2J mill. In order to connect this together, I went ahead and ran a hard line from my circuit panel. I have a dedicated 30 amp breaker, which I then used for my VFD. I created an enclosure with a see-through screen so that I can look at it and protect it. The line from my dedicated breaker comes through the EMT, ran it over to the VFD. The way I've connected my VFD is I've got my black going to the left, white going to the third lug, and of course the ground going to it. On the outbound side of the VFD, of course I've got the ground, then I've got my black wire, red wire, and white wire. From there, I went ahead and decided to create a plug so that I can connect my bridge port mill, but also at the same time, what I wanted to be able to do is disconnect the bridge port and run other machines on it in the future. The way I've wired my plug is I have my top lug is my ground, my left wire is my black, my right wire is the red, and the bottom lug is the white. That goes to my cord, which then connects up to the motor. I've removed the switches and other things in between the plug and the motor. On the motor, I went ahead and connected it in the low setting. That connects the four, five, and six wires together, the one and seven to the black, the two and eight to the white, and the three and nine to the red. That seems to work for me. Now, the first time I turned my machine on, my machine was running backwards. When I looked online, I found that if you re uh, move the wires and change two wires in an opposite direction, you'll go ahead and have the machine running the proper way. Initially, I had had my black, then white, then red. Now, I did that based off of a video I found on YouTube from another user who has a Hitachi VFD. Now that seems to work by having the wires in this manner connected through the plug to my machine. One of the things I've also looked at online is that people recommend protecting the VFD with an enclosure. Again, I just had scrap laying around so I decided to create this enclosure out of aluminum. I've also got a shop airline inlet into the box from my VFD. Now that means I can run my shop air compressor, fill the tank up, turn it off so I'm not killing my circuit panel. This needle valve allows me to regulate the amount of air going into the enclosure to help cool it. Now, as a hobbyist or as a, a home shop machinist, I'm not going to be using my machine like a production environment, so I don't think I will be overheating it. However, in the Virginia environment where I'm at, it's very hot and very humid in the summer, so I didn't want to take a chance of overheating the VFD. This way, when I close my enclosure, I can still see the readings on it, but at the same time, protect it from dust, connect my shop air compressor to it, blow some air up into it. Now this box is not obviously airtight, it's protected, but it's not airtight. So by dialing the needle valve in, I'll be able to allow some airflow in there to help cool the enclosure and help cool the VFD. When I want to use it, now I'm not, or I have not created a remote panel yet, that's next on my list. But if I want to go ahead and use my VFD for now, I leave the door open and I can turn around to my bridge port it's set up ready to go, wired the way that it is. I go ahead and turn it on and hit the run button. I can still see the VFD from here. And my bridge port's running. Turn it off.
turn it back on. I can then adjust. Since I don't have my remote, remote panel set up yet, this is going in the high speed. One thing I did find is that connected the way that it is, when I use my speed range lever over here, when it's in the high speed, it is spinning in the proper direction. When it's in the low range, it's spinning in the opposite direction, spinning the way it's not supposed to go. So that's where I had to go ahead and rewire my VFD to have it going in the right direction. For now, until I have my remote control panel set up, I'm actually adjusting the spindle speed with my dial up here. I understand you can't adjust it through the VFD, but again, I'm just going to go with this method for right now until I learn more about the VFD and learn more about the bridge port. If you have comments on what I've done, which is either correct, hopefully, or incorrect, please post them in the blocks and I'll try to respond from the comments. Hopefully we'll all learn something from that. Thank you for watching the video and please feel free to see my work and my webpage at psacustomcreations.com.